Welcome to episode nine of the Kyber Show. I'm Ken, and we have an exciting season of Grand Arena Championships ahead of us. There are now two fleets required in the ship zone, although the map itself hasn't changed. And because of this is so new for everyone, I'm going to be showcasing three interesting and less common matchups using fleets, um, other than Malevolence and Negotiator on offense for this week's episode. Um, I'm also going to realign my season numbering to match what Capital Game Capital Games uses. So this is actually going into season 11 now. Uh, many in the community refer to this as season 12 since a lot of people still count the first exhibition season, and I, I don't want to be confusing. I'm just going to match what CG publishes. Um, it's going to be an exciting or, or chaotic season and or chaotic season since we have now just seen the introduction of mod upgrades to 6A, which will add a lot of stats to characters that have those mod upgrades. And undoubtedly, many folks in Division 1 maybe Division 2, we'll be seeing or using uh, the Sith Eternal Emperor and Jedi Master Luke. We're going to see some crazy matchups. Let's get into the fights. The first fight we have is the Executress um, with starting line of an Imperial TIE Fighter, Imperial TIE Bomber, TIE Advanced X1, and backup of Emperor Shuttle, the Gauntlet, and the Ebon Hawk. First is a home one with starting three of Han's Millennium Falcon, Wedge's X-Wing, and Biggs' X-Wing. Um, we'll see who the reinforcements are. This matchup is all about the Imperial TIE Bomber taking its first turn. His Proton Bombardment dispels all buffs from enemies and applies burning, which can't be resisted or dispelled from rebels and prevents out-of-turn attacks and reduces their offense by 50 for light side enemies. Once this goes out, the fight's almost always a win. Let's see. Ah, I love how ship combat looks. So beautiful. Anyway, Hans Millennium Falcon starts with uh, watch this and then punch it. And now the Imperial TIE Fighter uses Targeting Computer to get Foresight. And let's take a pause here for a moment. It's the TIE Advanced Darth Vader ship. Um, and his basic deadly accuracy cannot be evaded or resisted and applies Target Lock for two turns. The Target Lock is critical for two main reasons here. The first is due to Executrix's unique victory at all costs. It gives um, allies, 20% offense for each debuffed enemy. And secondly, uh, dual pod design from the Imperial TIE Bomber reduces the offense of all rebel enemies by 50% when any rebel enemy is target locked. Um, Empire allies also ignore 20% additional defense for each rebel and each target locked enemy. So they're basically going to ignore all defense very shortly. Um, additionally, when the TIE Advanced X1 is, is active, um, his unique targeting syst advanced targeting system um, ability automatically reapplies target lock whenever it expires, and Empire allies gain 15% turn meter when they attack a target locked enemy. So there's a lot of synergy going on here. Um, Let's see, the basic almost kills Wedge's X-Ring outright. Home 1 uses Seize the Advantage instead of Defiant Volley, which saves some banners. Biggs doesn't get a target lock. There's some assists now going on. And finally, the Imperial TIE Bomber uses Proton Bombardment, which will dispel all of those buffs and apply the burning. Once this is, goes out, the fight is basically done. You can see the bonus offense um, coming in from Executress, Executress, um, from Imperial TIE Fighters Basics and from the TIE Advanced Basic. The TIE Bomber is soaking up the hits. We're now going to come out with a reinforcement. In this case, the Empire Shuttle is actually a bit better because you can, it also dispels the target 
and you can get protection regeneration. However, using uh, Ebon Hawk certainly works. It's just a matter of cleanup now. Um, they hit so hard. And right now, the last one drops, and that's an easy, clean win with this very simple hard counter. Great fight. The second fight we have is the finalizer with the TIE Silencer, First Order Special Forces TIE, Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle, um, with reinforcements of the First Order TIE, Sunfak and Ebon Hawk, versus a Home One with the Rebel Y-Wing, um, the Biggs X-Wing, and um, Hans Millennium Falcon, and some other reinforcements we'll find out about. Uh, this is the other ha hard counter to Home One, and it's all about speed, speed, and more speed allowing you to kill Hans Millennium Falcon before it even takes a turn, and then controlling the pace of the battle, and cleaning up and maximizing your banners after that's over. Finalizer goes first, and we use Extinguish Hope on Hans Millennium Falcon, which applies Hunted. Uh, this prevents the bonus turn meter gain on the target, and attacks out of turn do 75% less damage. We're going to pause here and go over everything that's starting at the beginning of the battle. It's a lot, um, and it's why this hard counter succeeds. So Finalizer should always move first when you have three other First Order allies in the field. His crew ability, two steps ahead, gives him plus 15 speed for his first turn at um, for each of the First Order allies, so he'll go even before the TIE Silencer. The same crew ability will also activate the reinforcement abilities from your allies, and in this case, this means the in this lineup, TIE Silencer gets Afterburner, which gives him 25% offense, um, and First Order Special Forces TIE Fighters, uh, Superior Precision will give out 80% potency, since these are all First Order allies, and reduces the enemy tenacity by 20%. Um, marking or hunt, being hunted on Hans Millennium Falcon at the beginning of the fight here, basically means it, it's over. We'll see as we uh, continue. Uh, the Silencer uses basic on Hans Millennium Falcon to stun him, then he is called into assist by Special Forces, and TM swap from the shuttle kills him, and really, after this is over, it's just a matter of cleanup. Um, he brings in Sunfac for an unresistible stun, that's perfect. Just picking these guys off once at a time. Now he should have used the uh, Zeal of the First or Surprise Raid to give Silencer a chance to stun here um, to improve banners. And here should have used the basic from Finalizer to kill or stun the Phantom. But at the end of the day, not a huge difference in terms of banners. And it's a, an easy cleanup. This is a very solid hard counter. There are some opportunities to max banners, but it's a nice solid win. Nice work. Fight number three, the fight of the week. This is the Rattus with Houndstooth, Resistance X-Wing, Pose X-Wing, and reinforcements of Ray's Millennium Falcon and Xanadu Blood or XB versus the Malevolence with Sunfac, Hyena Bomber, and Vulture with some reinforcements. This is a very reliable counter but it's dependent on making exactly the same set of moves each match and then having Radish use the Holdo Maneuver on her fifth turn. As soon as the Malevolence is gone, it's just easy to clean up since Malevolence's uh, Let Them Come crew ability uh, no longer applies. Let's see how it goes. Alright, the fight starts here and Pose X-Wing is first. He should always use the perfect shot as his opener. It's not guaranteed to be a critical hit, but he needs to use his specials. Um, now he gets he evades the stun from Suntac. Let's pause here for a moment and explain how this works and what the how Radis will use the hold of maneuver as soon as possible. She needs to use it on turn five, so that means that instead of turn ten, so that means that resistance allies, while they have foresight active, need to use specials. Each time that condition occurs, the cooldown of hold the maneuver gets reduced by one. So five times, resistance allies only have to use specials with foresight active. So the fight also starts here with Hound's Tooth, 
getting recharged deflectors. The foresight is nice, but more importantly the tenacity up, so he will resist the buff immunity from the, um, the buzz droids with their discard, discord missiles. So here he goes and uses Breach on, on Sunfac, and now Synchronized Salvo comes out from Aina Bomber using Disarray from Resistance X-Wing, another special, removes 30% TM, dispels buffs, applies daze, and has a 50% chance to apply to another ally, which helps a lot when it happens. Didn't occur. Uh, another special use here by Pose X-Wing, and now Outlast is used by Radis to give Reflector Shield again. Gotta have that foresight and spam those specials. Extinction B-28 Bomber comes in, doesn't really make a big difference in this counter, there's no real TM game by anybody on the field, so the, the days from the bombs really make a big difference. Okay, now bringing in Ray's Millennium Falcon, she uses uh, Thrust Reversal, she gets three stacks of that buff, and she also gets uh, Deflector Shield when she comes in since she's resistance. So it counts as a use for the whole maneuver. Um, okay, now we have just basics. Hyena Bomber just pinging away here, waiting for Ray. Excuse me, waiting for Radis to be able to use the hold the maneuver. Thankfully, Hound's Tooth taunts, pulls some focus away from Poe's X Wing. Okay, one more turn by Radis, putting deflector, recharge deflectors back on Hound's Tooth. Bunch of hits from Ray's William Falcon, but because of the unique from Malevolence, Malevolence providing 50% crit avoidance, it's not really a lot of damage. Here we go with another synchronized salvo, another special usage, and here we go with a hold of maneuver. That's an awesome animation. Beautiful. Now, Xenity Blood comes in. He's the only re other reinforcement, so he's guaranteed to come in at this point gives counterattack to Houndstooth, and now really it's just a matter of cleaning up. Uh, the Malevolence doesn't have any of his abilities um, providing the crit avoidance or additional vulture droids coming in, so it's a really quick, easy cleanup. Uh, this is a great execution of a very precise uh, counter against a uh, tough team. Very nice work, you can see why it's a fight of the week. Good job. Thank you for watching another episode of The Kyber Show. Uh, as always, I'm, I'm interested in watching new content creators, new uh, GAC fights, so please feel free to point me in the direction of any creators you like, or if you have a channel yourself, let me know. Drop it in the comments below and I'll definitely take a look. Also, if you have any feedback on the show itself, any of the fights, Please comment, I'd love to discuss with you. Thanks, and good luck on this very exciting next week of GAC, 6A Mods, and the new Galactic Legends. See you next week.